Today I'm going to show you how to make a flower bouquet inspired by the famous folk artist Heather Galler. Folk artists are known for telling a story with their artwork. Heather Galler loves nature and animals. Some of her popular subjects are flowers, landscapes, and dogs. Heather Galler is a professional artist from New York who has sold over 750 artworks in five years. Heather Galler uses the elements of art, color, pattern, line, and shape to create her beautiful masterpieces. So today for your materials, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, a black marker like a Sharpie, an eraser, and something to color with. So first we're going to look at the shapes that Heather Galler uses for flowers. She uses mostly circles. First, let's get our paper going in the right direction. So we're going to be using our paper portrait style, not landscape style. So it should be taller than wider. And then the next step is to fold your paper in half. Above the fold will be the space for the flowers and below the fold will be the space for the vase. Then to start drawing your flowers, you can start with a small circle, no smaller than the size of your pinky finger. Mine is a lot bigger in this example. And then you can draw another circle around it or you can start with petal shapes. For this one, I decided to draw a circle around the first circle and then I drew half circle shapes for flower petals. When you're drawing your flowers, it's important to use something called variety. That means you make each flower look different from the others. Think of different shapes, lines, and patterns that you can use to make each flower stand out. Remember when you're drawing your flowers that they should be above the folded line. So you can probably fit about four to six flowers depending on the size of your flowers. And you wanna make sure that you're filling in most of your space. So here I've drawn three flowers. I think I can fit about three more. You might have some flowers that bump into another flower like this one. When your flowers bump into each other, then you need to think about which petal is behind the other petal. So which flower is in front and which flower is behind? Right here, I am drawing these petals behind the flowers that I drew first. This is when understanding overlapping in drawing really comes in handy. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to draw the vase. We're going to start about two fingers below your last flower with a slightly curved smile line. This will make our vase look 3D. Then draw two diagonal lines that go a little bit in. And lastly, finish the bottom with another slight smile line. Now, maybe you wanted your vase to look a little bit different than mine, so here I'm going to show you two different vase shape ideas. Next, we're going to draw the horizon line. The horizon line is behind the vase where the wall and the table meet. Draw a horizontal line and stop at your vase and then continue on. 
Now you should draw stems and leaves for your flower and they should be going into your vase. Notice how some of mine are curved and they are a shape and not just one line. So by drawing two lines close together, you're making your stem look like a shape and not a line. Also notice that my stems stop when I hit a flower. You can also go ahead and add leaves to your stems in some of the empty spaces that you have. A leaf shape is similar to a petal but has a pointed end. Now we are going to draw patterns on our vase and on the table that the vase is sitting on. When you look at Heather Galler's work, she usually has a pattern on her vase and a pattern on the table surface. So I am drawing some different lines to create a pattern. Remember, a pattern is a repeated shape or line. Now that our drawing is done, the next step is to outline your pencil lines with a black marker. When you're outlining, it's important to go slowly to make your drawing look the best that it can. Now I'm going to speed up my video, but remember, I don't really outline this fast and I don't want you to either. So take your time. After you're done outlining, erase any pencil lines that are showing through. Next, we're going to start adding color. So first, look at your vase and figure out how you can show a pattern with color on your vase. So for mine, I have stripes. I'm going to do an A, B pattern using black and white. So I'm going to color in a section black and then I'm going to leave the next one white. So remember, an AB pattern could go like A, B, A, B, or in this case, it would be black, white, black, white. Now I'm also going to add a pattern on the table surface. So here's another tip for creating a pattern. I'm putting a blue dot in all the sections that will be blue. Make sure you follow the section all the way through because there's that little one peeking out behind the vase. Then I can go ahead and color in with my blue marker and I won't make any mistakes because I planned where my colors will go. Now I'm going to color in my flowers. And when I'm coloring in the flowers, I'm looking for the different shapes within my flowers. And I'm trying to color them in so that all the shapes stand out. To do that, color in the shapes different colors. You can also use different materials, like I have crayons and markers. Crayons are lighter and markers are darker. So I'm not going to take a color and color the entire flower with one color. That would make my artwork a little boring and I want each part to be interesting and each part to stand out.
Now I'm going to speed up my coloring a little bit, but remember that I don't want you to color this fast. I want you to take your time so that your flowers look the best that they can. Now I'm almost done and I think that I should create a background because I have a lot of white in my patterns on the vase and the table. So I'm coloring in with crayon and then I'm going to paint mine with watercolors. This is optional if you have watercolors and if you don't, you can always use something else to color in your background. All right, I hope you had fun creating your flower bouquet inspired by the famous artist, Heather Galler. I can't wait to see what you create.